Oh, dude, stop gulping down your coke. You're back on camera. Okay. Uh, yes, yeah, so we have Tingle here now. And what you want to do is, um, let's see, set him up here. You're going to want to go to this platform and then move Tingle to right around, uh, right around there when he makes that yeah sound on the Game Boy. And then you want to move yourself out of the way because he's going to blow up in a second. If you could do this, this would be nice. This is probably one of the more, one of the more cryptic uh, Tingle statue locations out of all the dungeons. And you bomb that. And there it is. Lo and behold, that might be the only second, like, that might be the only other spiky treasure chest in this entire dungeon. I know, I guess there's not normally that many spiky treasure chests inside dungeons anyways. Just the dungeon item. But here we get the forbidden Tingle statue. Scary. Kinky. It's covered in sticky sap. It will be waiting for you at Tingle Island. That's nasty, man. And what does Tingle say? Oh, Argon, you found it. This is the forbidden Tingle statue. I'm in what's called a delight pose. Knuckle made it for me on my 34th birthday. Wasn't that in Majora's Mask? Knuckle said it was modeled after how Tingle would look when it when he finally met a fairy. By the way, there are three more. Where do the others hide? In the other dungeons, I assume. And uh, that'll be it for Tingle for now. Thank you and good night, Tingle. Oh, I'm not signing off a video there, guys. Don't leave just yet, please. Uh, actually, I might be. I don't know. Depending on how I edited this. I'm already up to 30 minutes in this recording, so we'll see. So that's that. Uh, you really don't have to do that, like I've said before. And now that that's done, we'll continue with the regular route of this dungeon. And these guys now... Yeah, the theaters are that easy now. You can kill them in one shot with the boomerang. It's absolutely amazing. And uh, you can see a little bit, you can see a chest in there guarded by one of those guys. And uh, there's a little bit of a dilemma with this chest, because I'll show you what uh, what happens here. Because you might come around to the side and you'll see the hole here, and you're like, okay, well this is just elementary, right? You just enter here and you'll, get, you'll be able to snipe him with the boomerang once you get inside. But no, because no matter where you stand in this room, no matter where you are, he'll, you'll still be close enough to trigger his defense mechanism, and you can't boomerang through that. So there's got to be another way to kill him from outside of here. And that's basically going to be the whole point of this room. And what's in that chest is actually a treasure chart, so you don't even need to do this room if you're not going for all those. But since I am, uh, I kind of have to, naturally. That's another, this is another way you can deal with the morths, by the way. It's just uh, boomerang them to high hell. They don't even see it coming. Uh, oh my god, did you hear that? That was so scary. That's really scary when you can, like, target, when you target, like, multiple things all in, like, the same fraction of a second. Uh, oh, that doesn't work. I forgot. And, like, it makes, like, the same sound, except it's, like, crescendoing really, really fast with the boomerang sound. It's a bit unnerving. Alright, where do I have to go? Do I have to land over there? I think I have to land over here, don't I? Um, no, I don't. Okay. I'm just trying to, I'm struggling to remember the layout of this room. I'm very sorry. And you shoot that. You can you actually have a pretty big hitbox on those uh, switches as you just saw. Like I totally missed that. It's kind of like the eye switches in Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. Just such a big area of effect. Doesn't even matter if you hit them really. Especially with the frozen eye switches. All right, so you have this bomb flower here, and you remember where you, when you can kill one of those guys with the bomb flower before. Well, the same tactic works now. It's just a little bit tougher because you got to aim into that hole, which I apparently did on my first try. So that's cool. And they show a neat little uh, bird's eye view of it for you. Just to show, hey, dumbass, yeah, I actually managed to figure it out. And there you go. Man, that was a perfect landing. I didn't slide down there or nothing. I fell right in the hole right in front of the chest. Hmm. <laughs> that could be construed very differently. Anyways. <clears throat> this is one thing that's kind of annoying is... Not only do you have to, like, scroll through this text every time you get a treasure heart, except with the one that you don't, which I already showed... But, uh, but you can't open the treasure charts in the dungeons because you can't access them via your C chart. Because when you try to, it shows you the dungeon map instead, which is convenient. There's the boss, by the way. We'll be working over there shortly. But yeah, you can't open those. And like when you get out of the dungeon, you forget that you have the treasure charts. So it's like totally this weird thing where... Just, just never mind. Just look at the mossy ladder and admire that. Ignore my stupidity. My stupid ramblings. Yep. Alright. You can also use the boomerang to knock down this platform too if you want. But personally I prefer the spin attack. Oh god. Wow that was close. Wait how did he miss that? That was weird. 
Yeah, you can use the sword to get rid of those things too. I'm not sure if I ever made that clear. Because I always use the shield myself. And this is just a uh, nice little Super Mario Sunshine flashbacks here, I'm sure, for some people. Except you, ni you didn't really propel yourself in Super Mario Sunshine. The thing propelled you. Is this guy going to shoot me? Yeah, he is. Figure it. Alright, and do a bit of work around here and prepare. Brace yourself for this guy. Aw, oh, yeah. Brace myself for you, but you can't brace yourself for you. Now that's sad. Dude, I never noticed that torch over there. That's cool. Makes you wonder who put it there. I bet it was Makar. Of course, Makar's so tiny, he probably can't even lug around something that big. Yes, and here's another thing. is Now now with the boomerang, uh, you know how they like, go into this state where you can't hit them? If you hit them with the boomerang, you can hit them. So you don't have to wait around for those stupid things anymore. Thank the Lord on that one. Oh, God. So much green choo-choo jelly, I tell you what. Like, look at this. There's just heaps of it. There's hordes of it. Mounds and plethoras and bigots and... Oh, bigot is a horrible word. I shouldn't have used that. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know. Green chew jelly seems to be the most common in this game, even though, like, they're the second variety of chew you encounter. So you think it'd be the second most common. Alright, this is a neat little room. This is pretty nifty. Because you got the whole skylight thing happening and, uh... It shows you actually how dark it is in the dungeon most of the time. Like, there's this whole shadow lining. Really neat effect. You don't really see that too often. Well, what am I talking about? You do see shadows that often. <laughs> you don't see that too often, no. Just in this room in particular. Alright, now hit that, dude. Gonna need all of them. There's a, there's a weird thing here, too. Like, if you don't hit these in the right order, like, there's a certain two crystals that are more spaced out than the rest of them. And if you don't hit those two crystals either, like, as your first two as or as your last two, then it doesn't work sometimes. Like, you'll hit all five of them, but it still won't work. It won't activate the door to open to get the big key. But, um, yeah, so be a little bit wary of that. You notice, like, I always go for those two, like, uh, last, so... Actually, I think you have to hit it first and then hit the other one last. I think that's how it works. Like, the th out of the two that are spaced apart. Oh, no! <laughs> Man, you guys think you're so cool dropping out through the sun. Is that what it is? Well, you know what? Screw you guys. I'm going home. Oh, buddy, you can't leave here. <laughs> Hi! <laughs> Did your little friend just knock you over? Oh, my God. I guess I shouldn't tease these guys that much. Dude, they're just... This guy's just getting knocked around every which way. Dude, I want... I want their skull necklaces. That's what I'm trying to do here. Alright, that's one. Now I need to get the other one. Oh! Oh, my God, he has a huge punch. I forgot about that. Alright, you. I'm gonna get you. Thank you. Oh my god, they're they're whooping my ass. This is nuts. They're wailing on me. Mm, it's crazy. You can use the boomerang on these guys too if you want to stun them for a moment. Knock their guard down. Of course they still they do have the ability to block the boomerang too, so be careful. And I was kinda hoping that guy wouldn't draw parts because I wanted to use my red potion. You know that nasty ass stale red potion that's still sitting in my bottle that I got, that I got God knows when. All right. So once you beat those guys, that opens a door, but it's not the door you think, because you're like, well, I th I thought this was the only door in the room, but no, you saw that there was that one up there too. I like these little totem poles of nuts. It's so cool. Anyways, uh, so yeah, there's a door up there. And how are you going to get to that? There's, like, really no way. You can't, like, Deku Leaf up there. But if you look just a little bit higher... Yup. They're trying to trick you with this again. The bum nuts. Alright, sweet. I don't know. To me, it seems like that platform is almost too high to grapple to, even. But it works. What can you say? Can't argue with the facts. Man, more of these guys. I've had... I'm about sick of them. Is this the Forbidden Woods or the Green Choo Choo Station? The Green Choo Choo Incubator. I don't know, I'm not funny. Okay, uh, get rid of these morphs. Annoying morph. I'm the Great Link. I'm the Great Argon. You know what's funny is, like, a few days ago, I actually, like, uh, I discovered that I was not the first LP'er 
to think to use like Argon as their kind of stage presence. Stage presence. There was another guy way back in the early days of like LPing, like four or five years ago, on something awful, named Argon Sloth, and I never knew about him. Like I and I, if anyone ever thought like that I was ripping him off or something, like calling myself Argon, even though our names are actually like separate. Uh. I wasn't. I had no idea of his existence. Sorry about that. There's also another guy named Argon Choose who like appears in streams from time to time. I'm not sure if that name was inspired by me or not because I didn't see him until like uh, a while after my existence. But if it is, that's cool. You're cool, dude, if you're out there listening. You too, Argon Sloth. I don't know. I think he's kind of dead in the LP community now. Can't really find any of his, any of his videos or anything. I was kind of curious as to what his voice sounded like. Alright, so, now that we have the big key, uh, I'm gonna show you that, uh, wait, what? Oh yeah, it's down a floor, because down there, through that door, that's the way to the boss, as you can see. But if you remember, right, I said that we had to go back to that one room way early on. It was like the second room in the whole freaking dungeon, and we got this cool little skylight effect in here, too. But it's a much more minuscule skylight. That's really cool, too. I never actually noticed that. I always kind of wonder why the lighting in this room was so weird. And what's with these purple vines? I still don't get that. Those look like tentacles almost. But I always wonder why the lighting in this room is so much brighter than the rest of the dungeon. But it's because of that. I never, like, I never noticed that. That's so weird. Like, this is naturally something that would happen too. Like, a vine could grow through there and, like, open that up and it's layered so that would happen. I don't know. Just weird things that I noticed. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry for wasting your time with my, uh, rambles. My brambles. Alright, is this the room? No, this is not the room. We need to get back over that way. So, the switch should be over here. Nice. Dude, I swear I hit that. Thank you. I could hop over this platform if I want to. That's neat. Rarely ever get to get a close view of these, uh, neat li of these little things. It's really shaded, man. It, like, shades itself. I love objects that do that, where they, like, put a shade on themselves, but they only shade, like, half of themselves. So it's, it gives this really cool, like, thick line effect around them. Alright, oh, the, dude, I don't even need to go up here. What am I doing? What you need to do is head down through this door. And, uh, you know, this, the room, lighting in this room is different, too, is there? Dude, this is open, too? I love, oh my god, I love these open-air rooms. Oh, wait, don't do that. You're, stu you're stupid, man. You know why I think I love these open-air rooms so much? Like, I just keep orgasming and noticing them every time I see them? Is because, like, when I was a kid and I lived back in Canmore, I, there was, like, this... There was a woods behind my, uh, house. And I would always go exploring in there. But all, it was always so dark everywhere. And it was, like, kind of, like, disturbing and stuff. But, like... I don't... And I always... And whenever I found, like, a nice sunny spot... That, I would, like, sit there for, like, at least, like, 30 minutes, generally, and just kind of, like, take it in. It's cool. Anyways, so this is the whole point to coming back to this room, is this one treasure chart here. Racking in, raking in the treasure charts. These are the only two in this dungeon, as far as I, uh, remember, so... That should be that. And, uh, normally by now, I would probably just cut back... Actually, I probably cut out a lot of that trip just to get over to here, but... I don't know if I did. And normally I would just cut back to, uh... Wait, is there more here? Yeah, you can actually get over there and get some rupees, you can see. And there's a dude over there, too, a, Bo a Boko Baba. If you want to kill him for... Who knows what reason. But, um... Yeah, normally I would just cut back to where I was. But I can actually show you that, uh... If you want, you can head just back into the first room here. And utilize the warp pot to your advantage. I guess you could utilize the warp pot to get there in the first place. But it seems to me like the path is more convenient and also, and also more cool if you just walk there. That was a really strange angle. And now that we're done with all that, let's uh, be on our way to the boss. What do you say?